Welcome back to Bud Light Hog Talk, final segment of this week's episode. Slav Kobekovic now joined by Byron Fraze, Ice Hogs Forward. Let's give a nice round of applause to Fraze. Our thanks to Ben Simon and Joachim Nordstrom for joining us in the first two segments. Fraze, thanks for your time. Yeah, anytime. Welcome aboard and welcome back to Rockford. It's, it's been a while for you, huh? Yeah, it's a long road this year, uh, this season, it's, uh, but I'm glad to be here. Coming up from the, uh, the Toledo Walleye there where you had some success, 33 points in 38 games. The team was... Uh, Kind of in a similar position to the Ice Hogs, right around the final playoff spot, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, we were in eighth, or we were really well uh, two weeks before I left. We were in fourth place, but then the last two weeks, we kind of just lost too many games and uh, fell down to eighth place. But uh, I think they clinched a spot now, so it's good. Good experience for you down there in the ECHL? Yeah, I mean, I was there last year for three games, too, so I kind of knew what it was like. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was good. You got to play a lot. You only play three lines, so it's, you got to play every game, every shift, every kind of situation, so it's good. A lot of familiar faces for you down there as well. Uh, I'm sure it's a lot of teammates you played with in Rockford and, and guys you saw earlier this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, I actually lived with Kent Simpson, who I played with back in Everett, too, so it was, it was good to know him and have him around to, to uh, stick together with. Well, we got a question on Twitter from Amanda. She says, how does it feel to be back in a hog sweater and be a part of the, of the team as they make their push for the playoffs? Oh, it's great. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything better. I'm, uh, and uh, to get to play the role that I'm playing is, is uh, I think, right up my alley. So I'm really excited. A handful of games in Rockford uh, so far since you came back. A bit of an adjustment period coming up from the ECHL? Um, I, I would it's a little bit, yes. It's a faster game up here, definitely. But... Um, I think the the kind of the speed kind of wore off on me just because uh, the shape that I was in from playing so much in Toledo, sure. uh, playing three lines or getting double shifted down there. So I mean, I think I was in good enough shape to really transition really quick. One of the things that I've always heard the adjustment from the ECHL to AHL is that guys are making crisper passes and better decisions with the puck. They tend to hold on to the puck a little too long in the East Coast League. Yeah, it's definitely a lot easier to play up here. I mean, uh, you got more skilled guys. I mean, you got D-men that'll take take a hit to make a play, and instead of just rimming it all the time. So it's a lot easier to play the higher you go. And I hear the same thing for the NHL too. Is uh, when you get to that level, it's even easier to play. So it's it's good. A big weekend for the team, taking three out of four up in Abbotsford. What was the uh, the travel like for you? How did it uh, bother you at all with the time zone? Uh, I mean, it's it, it's the same for everybody. I mean, uh, just kind of get used to it, and you uh, try to stay up as late as you can the first night so you can sleep in to the right time, and just uh, just keep with your rhythm. Uh, I mean, everyone has their routine, so you just, if you stick to it, you'll you'll still feel good. Does it really play that big of a factor once you land? Obviously, the two hour the gap is is different, maybe with the sun and and whatever time it is. But is it more of a mental thing or a physical thing with the time zone? Uh I mean, it's a little bit of both. I mean, it's a long flight, but uh, I mean, it's better than a 24-hour bus ride or whatever it would be. So sure. um, I, think, I think what really helped out was uh, when we landed, it was really sunny. It was nice. It was a great spring day there. So Spring? Uh, what's that like? It was a lot better than coming back when we came back here and we saw the snowstorm and the blizzards and, uh, and the cold weather. I mean, it's not like Toledo has that much better weather than, if any, uh, than Rockford, but what was the weather uh, like up there in Abbotsford? You would think um, further north it would be colder, but maybe that uh, that coastal. No, and weather. and uh, in Vancouver they always have a really mild spring. It's usually just rain, uh, if if that. Maybe a little bit of snow once in a while, but it was really nice. It was probably fair. I don't know. I don't know how you guys do the Fahrenheit thing, but it's probably about I would say 45 degrees Fahrenheit or 50. You can degrees give us Fahrenheit. a Celsius. I know. I know the math. I don't know. It was. I think it was a good 15 degrees outside usually for Celsius. So that, yeah, that's pretty good. Normally you just multiply by two and you add 32. So. 15, yeah, 30, about 60, 62 degrees, somewhere around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so no, it's good. We'll, we'll let it slide. America chooses not to do Celsius, <laughs> but whatever. That's for an, another show. Um, we talked to uh, Ben Simon about this earlier in the show. Um, any special preparation or maybe different preparation for you on the road as compared to a home game? No, I mean, uh, being in Toledo, you kind of have to warm up yourself. So, I mean, I, I think I found a good uh, solid rhythm to getting myself warmed up, getting myself prepared, prepared and so uh, even when I'm at home, I like to just take things into my own hands and uh, warm up myself. So it's, it's, I think that really prepared me for, for road games especially and uh, just to be always, always prepare yourself to play. Does it, uh, does it help to go on these long road trips? And, and you know, there's certainly teammates that you know very well already, but maybe with some newer guys getting to know them pretty well? Yeah, it's always good team bonding. I mean, because you go out for dinner together or you, uh, you, yeah, you go grab a bite after a game or something like that or grab a snack or doesn't matter what you do you're always doing it together I mean 
a bunch of us like to play cards on the road, so we we usually find a good group to just sit down and play a game of cards and just uh, just have fun. Is there a game of choice for for the cards? Uh, yeah, it's uh, called Schnarps. Um, no idea. It's I think it's only a hockey game. I haven't ever seen it anywhere else. It's not on iTunes yet. I checked. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Who are the uh, Who are the big card players on the team? Uh, definitely uh, Rasislav is. He, okay. he loves it. It's a European um, thing. It, yeah. Cards are big over there. Um, the, the three of Piri, Mo, and Stance, they, they usually like to play. Uh, the three Stooges. Yeah, we try, to, we try to get them in there when we can. But uh, I don't know. It's just you find different guys, and uh, there's some guys that are there every time, some guys that are new. Uh, what else do you guys do to kind of kill a downtime? There's obviously a lot of downtime when you're a pro hockey player, but especially on the road, what else do you guys do to pass the time? On the road, it's it's usually just cards or uh, I don't know whatever. When it's nice outside, it's I don't mind going for a nice walk or just walking to grab a coffee or something like that. But uh, yeah, when you're at home, it's a lot easier to pass the time. I'd say. When the uh, the team was up in or down in Texas, I guess at the beginning of February, a lot of guys like to take advantage of that. You know, the the river walk in in San Antonio. Are there any similar trips like that in Toledo? Um. Yeah, we went to uh, Greenville, South Carolina, or maybe that's North Carolina. I'm I not think sure. it's South Carolina. Yeah, the Road Warriors, uh, right? Yeah, it was really nice there. I took a couple of nice walks there. And just then you can walk to, to nice restaurants. And then we went even more south to um, Charleston, and that's a beautiful, beautiful city. They, their downtown is unbelievable. We went down there, walked down there, saw all the different uh, little shops they have there. All the different. Uh, I mean, that's a really old city, I think. So. It was it was cool to see the scenery then, and uh, I miss unfortunately I missed the flight down to Florida when everyone went deep sea fishing. So uh, that one uh, was stung a little bit for me. That was uh, that was right at the end of the lockout, right when the team went down to Florida to play the Everblades. For you guys, they they do three game weekends, right? In uh, to play one team when you go on those long trips like that in the ECHL. Yeah, I think I think they played three games. I mean, like I said, I wasn't there, but uh, yeah, it's, it was definitely disappointing that I missed that one. Uh, so on the opposite side of things, I guess you played uh, in juniors with Everett, and I didn't know this this until today that you played with Kyle Beach. Uh, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, me and Beach and uh, Simpson all played together the, the my first year, or well, my mine and Simmer's first year, and uh, yeah, it was it was good. He was he was a good friend back then. I mean, he didn't really uh, not so much anymore, right? <laughs> oh no, he's a great friend. I lived with, I lived with him last year too, so he's he's I'm always sorry. treated me well and. Uh, um, yeah, unfortunately, my line mate that I had back then, he didn't really care too much for it, but that's okay. A lot of guys don't care too much for Kyle Beach, <laughs> especially when you uh, play against him so much. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we actually had an interview with Beach a couple weeks back, and we were kind of putting a question on the tee for him, talking about his maturity off the ice, and then he decided to just be a, a goofball on, on the interview. Has, have you seen him, not to go kind of on a Kyle Beach tangent, but have you seen a difference maybe in his game on and off the ice or his maturity back when you knew him in, in 08 in Everett compared to now with the, with the Ice Hawks? Uh, Same Kyle Beach, right? <laughs> I mean, Kyle Beach is Kyle Beach. You get what you want, right? And, uh, <laughs> and a lot of teams like that, and it's every, I think every team needs a guy like that that'll uh, stand up for anybody or, st or uh, just, you know, he'll take a punch. And so, I mean, he's a, he's a great player, and he's got a wicked shot, too. I mean, I've witnessed that a lot in juniors, especially... Uh, Unfortunately, he scored uh, the 50-goal season against us, so that was uh, kind of too bad. Winkler, Manitoba, right? That's, that's the, the hometown? Yep. Small town uh, south of Winnipeg, right? How far south is it? Uh, about an hour south. 10, 10 12,000, some, something like that, right? Yeah, I, I don't even know anymore. What, uh, what, what's the town like? Describe Winkler. Oh, there's nothing really to describe. It's... <laughs> It's a farm town, so there's a lot of farmers around there, and um, yeah, I mean, we got a Tim Hortons now, so that was good. <laughs> I don't, it's, it's Is there a stoplight? Yeah, we got a couple stoplights. Wow. Uh, movie theater. Bustling uh, metropolis now. Yeah, it's, it, is, it is what it is, I guess. Everyone uh, I'm, I take it up there is big-time Jets fans? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even my, my dad has season tickets to Jets games, too. He somehow got them in, in the whatever 10 seconds it took to sell them out, so... Uh, were you a Jets fan growing up, or, or what was kind of your team of choice? Uh, I was too young to I was too young to be a Jets fan when I started. I mean, I have a jersey, and it probably would have fit would fit a three year old, so that's probably when when I would go to games. But uh, I mean, my team of choice was always Montreal because that's what my family was my my dad was into, my brothers were into. So I mean, I remember watching uh, like guys like Vincent Damfus and Mark Recchi, and I think it was John Leclerc on the line too. So. That's probably as far back as I can uh, remember for hockey. Now, the Jets were not in existence when you were a kid, but was, uh, was there still kind of a lot of 
like Jets fandom around? Do you still get that feeling of we wanted a, a pro team or an NHL team yeah. in Manitoba? You always you always see the people walking around with jerseys and uh, and always wanting to, wanting them to come back. You always heard the talk. Oh, are they, I hear they're coming back now. Or, but uh, I never really thought it was going to happen until until this whatever two summers ago now. And so it was it was pretty crazy. I mean, once they built that new arena for the for the Manitoba Moose, I think. Everyone was kind of hoping, okay, this is our time now, this is our time. But, uh, I mean, they've been patient, so I'm glad, uh, I'm glad they got it back. I heard the wait list for season tickets is like 10 years now or something yeah, like that. It's ridiculously it's tough. hard. I mean, yeah, it's, to get season tickets now, it's pretty tough. So I'm pretty, uh, my dad was pretty excited when he got his, his in first time. Was there any favorite players you had growing up that you, you maybe model your game after or just favorite players in general? Uh, yeah, my favorite player was always Mark Recchi. Growing up, uh, I don't know why, just picked him. He's a Montreal guy, so I liked him. And uh, I mean, he made a good long career for himself. He was sure. in Pittsburgh for a while there too. And uh, but other than that, I mean, I I like the way uh, Henrik Zetterberg plays on the on the wings. I think uh, it's, it's someone someone that I would definitely want to model my my game around. But I uh, don't think I'm to that level yet. You got to get there. I mean, yeah, it, exactly. it's, it's not it's, it's not why a, he's a role model. It's not an overnight process. <laughs> uh, what we want to do, uh, or we want to know what. Byron Fraze does, outside of cards, since you, you like to be all about cards, off the ice, what does Byron Fraze do? Maybe in the offseason. You mentioned the deep sea fishing they did in Florida. Would you have been a big fan of that? Uh, no, I, I mean, I've never really done much fishing, I wish, but uh, never really gotten around to that. I'm a big golfer. I lo love to golf. I mean, I, I even got around and ready when I was in Toledo when we had a couple nice days in a row, so that was, that was awesome. Uh, Any good? Uh, Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> do you follow the Do you follow the PGA Tour? Or? I'm not a huge follower in it. I like to like in summer. I like to watch, just spend a weekend watching the tournament. But uh, I'd rather be out there golfing than uh, watching on TV. Before the show started, the first thing you said when you came in was, "Did you see that Sergio Garcia shot from the Arnold Palmer yeah, Invitational?" I got I've a seen. chance to finally see that. Would you have done the same thing? For those who don't know, <laughs> he hit a ball into a tree, legitimately into a tree, and it stopped. In the, in the base of the tree between like four or five limbs. He climbs up there and, and hits a one-handed shot onto the fairway. It was pretty impressive. Would you have done the same thing? Uh, I'd like Take to a say drop. so. I don't know. I think, uh, think I would have hit a mulligan or something like that. <laughs> do, they, do they allow those in the PGA Tour? Only in the video not, games, Not right? on the tour, no. no. Um, but uh, usually in a pickup game with buddies, they allow it, I think. Do, the, uh, do you have any you know, highlights from your, from your golf career, your amateur golf career? No, no, no hole in ones, ones yet. Nothing. No, I uh, hope to this summer, but a uh, couple of eagles, that's about it. Uh, I hit a scratch around this last summer, which was, was pretty cool. Um, other than that, no, not really. Any great courses that you've played? I uh, played a PGA course in Minnesota. I don't remember what it was called, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, li I just like to try different courses. I mean, there's, there's a lot of nice courses out there, and uh, last summer when I was in Calgary, I played probably a, a good handful of different courses, and it was it was a great summer. Any other sports that you're a fan of outside of golf? Um, I used to play baseball when I was younger, but kind of gave that up once I had some shoulder problems. So, I mean, I like I like watching baseball, I like the Blue Jays, even though they're uh, they've been tough for the last few years, but. Uh, they just they're looking, about, they're looking promising this year, and uh, we're hoping for the best. Yeah, they added about $500 billion in payroll this offseason, yeah, so good. they should win. That's what they should have done a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll do some quick fire with you to finish things off as well. Favorite food? Um, steak, potatoes. Steak and potatoes, just nice and simple? Yeah. How do you like it cooked? Medium to medium rare, probably. I know, these are hard-hitting questions. Favorite musician? Um... Probably uh, Mumford and Sons. Okay, I yeah. think they were playing that over the speakers here. Yeah, I, I here heard earlier. it before. It was jam, jamming, out, jamming out to it. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie? Um, usually, it's. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with Lawless. It's a new, newer movie I've seen. It's actually really good about the prohibition and stuff like that. So it was good. I enjoyed that one as well. Good choice. Uh, favorite color? Uh, don't have one. I don't know. Doesn't matter, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> favorite hockey team? Uh, obviously the Blackhawks, yeah. Oh, you switched it up. It was Canadians earlier, now it's all about the Hawks. It can't be. A fan Brownie forever, points, right? Yeah. Uh, favorite non-hockey team? Um, Blue Jays, probably. All right. Favorite vacation spot? I need to go on vacation, so I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> Anywhere hot. Anywhere hot. Not Abbotsford, or I guess not Rockford, but yeah. Abbotsford is warmer than here, sadly. And uh, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Uh... Read minds, maybe? I don't know. Ooh, it's a good one. I don't know if I want to know what's on some people's minds, though. It'd be pretty cool. And now, uh, I guess, last question. With March Madness going on, have you been following it all? Do you, do you even care about basketball? I know most hockey players just generally hate 
basketball. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of basketball. I mean, I, th I think if I were to watch a basketball game, it would definitely be college basketball because I can't stand uh, the referee and then the NBA. But, uh, I mean, Ill Illinois fans would say they got hosed last night. FYI. Yeah, I mean, uh, Iowa State as well. I'm, I'm going to probably just give up on watching it right now because I had Gonzaga winning it all and they lost. So, so you did fill out a bracket? Yeah, I filled out a bracket. But Who would you have in your well. final four? Uh, I think it was Gonzaga, Kansas, one of the Kansas teams. Uh, Not Florida Gulf Coast, I'm betting. I might even have Butler in there, too, and they lost. Okay. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm already toast for my pool. <laughs> well, Frazy, thanks for your time, and best of luck the rest of the year. Thank you. All right, give it up for Byron Fraze.